I'm on a Windows server, and what I want to do is I want to check out DNS logging. This happens to be a domain controller on an Active Directory domain. So I'm going to go to Tools, and from here I'm going to go into DNS. And this opens up the DNS management. Now I want to look at logging for our DC computer. So if I go to where it says Domain Controller DCO2, I can right-click and go to Properties. And from here, I'm going to look for where it says Debug Logging. So by default, this is turned off. So I'm going to check the box to turn it on. And there's a lot of different things that we can set up for logging to occur. If we check everything, we're going to get a lot of information. So you definitely want to make sure you're only going to check boxes that concern you where you need to see them in a log file. So first we see the outgoing and incoming, and then we also see the option for UDP and TCP. Although there are other protocols out there, these are going to be the main two when it comes to DNS. Next, you want to see about queries and transfers, updates and notifications as far as what the packet contains. Then you're going to look at the packet type and look at the request and response. Do you just need to see the request, do you just need the response, or do you need to see both? Going down further, we see other options where we can see the log unmatched incoming response packets. So if we see a packet that does not have a matched incoming response, we can see that information as well. We can also check out the details and filter packets by IP address. This is one of the more useful parts of debug logging. So what you can do is click on filter and say just the IP address that you want to add in, and so you're only going to see the packets from that one device. I'm going to cancel that because I want to see more than that. And then you can also put in a log file for the path and name. So I'm going to put in C colon backslash DNS, and we can see the maximum size in bytes. You definitely don't want to fill up your entire hard drive with log files. So go in here, and again, this is in bytes, so you're going to have to convert that from the gigabytes or terabytes that you might have free on your server, and then decide how many you need. And by making sure you don't go over that, you won't fill up your hard drive and make the computer unusable. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to go into the C drive. And there's my DNS file. Now, right now, it says there's zero kilobytes. But if I hit the F5 refresh, we can see it's already built up 42 kilobytes, even though I actually haven't done any queries myself. So let's take a look at what's in that file. I'm going to choose to open with Notepad. And here we can see message logging keys that shows us what all these different things mean. And then we can scroll down and see the date and the time and the packet information. So for instance, here's one for a remote address of .130. We're on .193 right now. It used a socket of 800. We can see the length, the message length, etc. And then remember, you can use the keys at the top to determine what all these different things mean. Of course, an important part of these packets are whether or not there was an error. So you want to check for errors. And you can go down. So you can see how quickly this file can fill up. So you want to make sure that you turn it off when you're all done with it. I'm going to go back into DNS Manager, go to Properties, go to Debug Logging, and then just uncheck and click OK. Now that's turned off. Now there's other types of DNS logging as well. So if we go into Server Manager, go to Tools, and then go into Event Viewer, then we should see a special section for DNS because of the fact it's a DNS server. So I'm going to expand Windows Logs, expand Application and Service Logs, and then we should see an area for Active Directory as well as DNS. Sometimes there's a bit of a delay when you expand applications, but that's okay. Click on DNS once it's finally done. And now we can see our DNS logs. Now, these DNS logs are going to show up regardless of whether you check the debug logging. And it's going to tell us whether or not there were any issues. It also has a lot of information-only packets. And this just gives us information. It doesn't actually mean that there's any kind of a problem. If I go down to where it says warning, we can see that there is a warning here saying DNS servers waiting for Active Directory domain services to signal that the initial synchronization, et cetera, et cetera. So you can take a look at that, look up the event logs online along with the error to see if you can resolve the issue or whether 
It could just be an issue that's not that important. Now, you also could see errors. If you see critical, it means that it's much worse, but you shouldn't see that in a DNS log. That typically shows up in the system logs. But here is an error that shows up, and it says it was unable to complete the directory service enumeration. So this one could be a little bit more serious. So once again, you want to take the event ID, the error information, and then just paste that into a search, and it'll tell you whether or not you have a serious problem. DNS logging can help us resolve issues with web browsing as well as Active Directory issues. DNS is the most important part of what makes Active Directory function properly.